we are streaming this on Twitch and you might have gotten a invitation at this point during Zoom. There is slight delay between Zoom and Twitch. So in case you are an spectator, you could follow, for instance, just the streaming, which is quite fine. And um, you will need to, to log in, to sign up to Twitch. It's really quick. And you can do that in this meantime, and uh, you will be able then to access the chat and interact with us in the chat. We will present really soon the, the main players of the game and uh, the others will have the, the possibility to act as supporters or even as observers, depending on, on how you want to interact with the game. So now I, I give the floor to Peter Snoria that will introduce the game for us and uh, exciting. So welcome everyone officially to the Equicity testing game finale. I'm really, really glad to have you on board in this. And uh, some people already joined some tests like Ilaria and Aditya. And we are really happy to have the session here with you guys online. And thank you for joining and Peter's on the floor. Thank you. Yours. Thank you, Bruno. And thanks for everyone for waiting a little bit longer and apologies for the delay. I was uh, having a bit of a technical issue, but without further ado, so I uh, introduce you to the Equicity game. Um, so you have all received the, the invitations for, for joining uh, uh, the game online on, the, on our platform emergentium.io. If you are an observer, you can observe the session through Twitch and please feel free to interact on Twitch uh, via the chat mechanism over there. And let us know if you had any questions in the meantime through the private chat here. Uh, the Equicity game was conceived and developed uh, right before the, the lockdown started in 2019. Uh, a proposal for the NVO uh, idea generator call. And we are so happy that it was granted. We have done so much work. Shervin has done most of the work. Shervin is our magician who has made the made the interface together with one of our former collaborators, uh, Noor Abu Zaid from London. And now we have uh, the platform running, up and running. So the session today includes uh, this very short presentation about the, the game and then a, a more detailed introduction to the game and the mechanics of the game, how it works and how the player have to play the game. Um, and then we'll play a set, uh, until three o'clock and then we'll have a short break and we'll continue with another set of more or less three rounds in every set. And then we'll have a final discussion during which we will be very happy to have your opinions about the game. Um, so about the, the idea of the game and the word equity, there are usually some questions, what on earth is equity and how is it different from equality? Uh, we think that this caricature actually explains it very well. So equity is mostly about equal opportunities and uh, uh, fair treatment and, and justice in, in the distribution of uh, services, uh, any sort of uh, uh, benefits, and of course, also the costs. Um, so our game, like many games, has a playing mechanism and scoring mechanisms. Um, the, the, the play mechanisms, uh, are surrounded uh, uh, by the idea of voting and participatory value evaluation. Uh, so you will practically be submitting uh, votes on the decisions. And together we will form the decisions as to how an area must be developed. So it's an area development game or city planning or urban design, whichever way we want to interpret it. And then there will be scores with respect to the criteria that we all care about and we will specify how much we care about each and every one of those criteria um, from our own point of view. And the players have some pre-assigned profiles, so they will somehow play the role of the, the profile that is assigned to them. Uh, but in general, there can be uh, an unlimited number of players in, in virtually. Um, so the scores will also be uh, analyzed and, form, um, and they, they will eventually form some badges for the for the players who have played well in some sense. You will hear about them from Sherwin in a few moments. 
so another picture about equity and equality in, in urban planning or design. And here's a, an overview of the entire game. It's about, as I said, submitting votes and decisions. Uh, we convert the problem of design into a problem of decision making. And in the background, the game engine, the most important thing that it does is, it, uh, is that it runs uh, multiple evaluations on uh, key performance indicators, um, uh, exemplary ones. So these key performance indicators are somewhat um, fictitious in this case, but they, they are realistic at the same time. So one of them is about shadows and lights, and the other one is about uh, um, the, the closeness ratings that, uh, that have been specified for the site, how uh, close we are to them, and how much change are we introducing in the area. That change might actually entail uh, disrupting the site in the sense of uh, uh, eventually demolishing some of the uh, some parts of the site which have uh, tangible or intangible heritage values you will hear about them from bruno in detail uh, we uh, base the idea of the game on on uh, the so-called uh, control and interest matrices so we have multiple players and we have multiple uh, or players or actors we have different parts in the site or sites and we have functions or colors assigned to them functions such as residential commercial cultural functions etc and these functions are represented with the colors and the the players uh, can have various degrees of interest and control over what they want to change here on the site with respect to the different colors and as i said at the end every Every round of the game is evaluated with respect to the overall uh, quality criteria and the players who have played well will get a badge, like the player of the round, the gainer of the round, and the contributor of the round. Um, the test case that we have chosen is the Kabel Fabrik in, in Delft, for which there is already a, a plan, a master plan or design. And um, as a caveat or a disclaimer, I'm, I must say that Whatever we are doing here today is, uh, is a fictitious scenario. We are reimagining the design of this site. And that doesn't mean that we really want to propose this design. It's a test case for showing the potential of participatory design in, in a real, um, uh, real situated uh, site. And the data that we use is the open geospatial data of the Netherlands. And Practically, we can run this game in many other locations in the Netherlands because of the access to the geospatial data. But this site in particular is a very interesting site that we have chosen carefully. You will hear about it from Bruno in detail. So I cut that story short for now. And uh, the, the way the, the game engine works in, in, in general is that uh, it bases every decision on two things. One is the votes and the, the interests or the control matrices of the players and also the evaluations. So the evaluations uh, that are running uh, behind the curtain, you don't see them. They actually form the basis of all the decisions uh, concerning the massing and the zoning of the site, mostly the massing, like how should the, the building be formed and what colors or what functions or what uh, spatial functionality should be assigned to the different parts of the site. And one of the key elements of the, the game is the opinion pooling, which is a method of participatory uh, voting and, and uh, equalization of the votes of the multiple stakeholders in the game. All these things happen in the background and the, the game engine also produces aggregate results of the evaluation and shows some kind of a spider plot of the key performance uh, indicators at the end. How did we design it? We designed it with a lot of, by means of a lot, uh, so many sketches and, and ideas and, and uh, coding and, and putting together uh, multiple different things that previously were disconnected. Uh, and we have invented a few things uh, to, uh, to get the, the job done the job being uh, evaluation, aggregation of evaluation results and generative design of the mass of the building based on the open geospatial data of the site. 
And here's our team, the Equi City Council. Uh, I'm the Blues brother, <laughs> if you didn't recognize. Uh, Sherwin the Merlin is our magician and the main developer of the game. Bruno the Nettuno, he can explain to you what that means. And Anna the Torah, a Viking uh, hero of the team. Uh, there will be mechanisms set by Bruno for measuring the sentiments and, idea and collecting the ideas about the game. And in one of these, you can see that there is already some sentiments. Uh, there are already some sentiments submitted to the Mentimeter. You can maybe scan this QR code to have the link uh, right now or later. Bruno will show it again, I think, or pass you a link. And there will be also an evaluation form which uh, is something that we really want to see uh, filled in with, uh, with your ideas and, and your comments and, um, and sentiments again. That's it uh, from my side. So I stop sharing and pass the floor to... I can, I can go next. Bruno or Sherry. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Pyrrhus. So just um, complementing guys with a little bit of um, background info on the case study. So the case study is the Cabo Fabrique and it's located in the southern part of Delft, uh, aligned with uh, the TU Delft. And uh, it's one of the last, uh, let's say, architectural uh, pieces of uh, the industrial phase of Delft, uh, especially in the 20th century. So it opened up in 1914 uh, as a Dutch cable factory. Yes, yes. You can enlarge your view. Oh, you, you cannot see it uh, full screen? No, not yet. Okay. So let me see. Just a moment. Slide show. Maybe here. Let me try again. What about now? Uh, you are sharing the full screen? screen? Not the screen. If you share the screen, you will be able to. I'm sure it's the first screen. So let me try again. It is a presenter screen. No, if yes. If you no. It's a presenter no. screen, but maybe it's okay. Yeah, I don't. Don't know display settings. I think it's already more beautiful than the other screen. If you click on the swap presenter view and slideshow, it automatically. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys. Okay. So <laughs> moving forward, and then um, so so the cab cable factory just. Um, Went, went to Delft to, to match up with other uh, industrial uh, fabrics in, in Delft, like the Gist and Spiritus fabric, the penicillin, Calve, uh, that was chemical, and also fabric of bicycles, fabric of beers. So we had all these uh, industrial important buildings um, alongside the Xi and, and and up to the north, where still we have the Spiritus Fabric. And, um, and, and the Cabo Fabric became one of the largest factories in Europe and then in the world, eventually, especially after the war. And, um, and, and together with, with the the Delft was the biggest employer of that time. It then went vacant in 1999 due to stagnation in the market. In 2009, it became uh, occupied by small scale entrepreneurs. And now there is a project that's already been approved by the May architects 
and basically they they want to uh, transform this area into housing and mixed use um, so that it, it, it's not uh, only housing but also brings up other functions to make it more dynamic but the thing is with the project is that it uh, it proposes some high-rise buildings and it would change completely the the main typology and the history of this place so that's why also we, we picked this case as an emblematic case of the one of the less reminiscence of the industry in Delft and in our historical background heritage background we understand heritage in terms of a combination of attributes and values attribute being what is valuable and values, why is it valuable? And I also wanted to share that um, interestingly in the Cabo Fabric, they had this um, department called development and entertainment. And they had many different clubs like orchestra, drama, tennis, football, fencing club. And all of them, um, they were supposed to to keep the employers healthy and keep the employers happy too. And it was quite a uh, vanguard thought in terms of um, how to treat the, the employees. And this created, of course, this intangible value attached to this building, to this company that uh, also got lost over time. For instance, the orchestra was um, terminated in 1992. And uh, many of these clubs, most of them, they, they don't exist anymore. We can find some info or some, let's say, um, updating of the, this uses in the Teo Delft, in, in the ex Teo Delft, you have all these different um, arts and culture and sports activities, but not that much in this area um, again. So that's an important um, dimension to take into account. And we also work in the background of the, the software and our research in these categories of values by Anna Pereira Rodgers. So this is also something that you can keep in mind. You will be introduced to some of the attributes that you will be um, focusing on the Cabo Fabric, what to keep, what to, to remove in terms of new functions you will be proposing. And uh, also there's this matrix of the attributes that can be tangible and can be intangible and um, some examples for you. So it's a particular uh, facade, it's a large uh, scale building in cubic form. And you have this long internal streets that have these horizontal windows and the metallic structures. You have the chimney and, um, and also as intangible, for instance, the orchestra on, on the background as, as attributes that comes that came along and were, they were discontinued somehow so i wanted to to share this with you just to highlight how important it is to to bring on board when you are uh, designing and negotiating from now on both the tangible and the intangible attributes and uh, what uh, which functions you will be addressing as a player in this game and make sure that you are consistent with your role play but also that you take some inspiration on this brief uh, historical background as um, inspiration for your designs. That's all my side now. Back to you, Sherwin. Thanks a lot, too, for the nice introduction. So if I can share my screen, I will give you an introduction to the gameplay and the rules and the interface so we can start the Session. Okie dokie. So, first, about a bit about the interface. So, you can access the interface through emergentium.io. The players would have, uh, they have already received uh, credentials for signing in. They would have <clears throat> access to the information of their profile and their roles through that. And uh, for the rest, they can also access the platform and browse all the information and follow the game. Also, they can check the evaluations as I will uh, present to you a bit later. So 
the navigation of the system, it's super simple. For planning, you can use your uh, left, left click on your mouse and hold it. For orbiting, you can hold shift and uh, left click on your mouse. And for zooming, you can use uh, scrolling and that should be simple enough. The game menu has three main parts. It has the profile panel, the control panel, and the information panel. Uh, in the profile panel, you should be able to sign in. And after signing in, you would see the uh, information regarding your role. And inside here, the main uh, important information for the players is the matrices. There are three matrices, as Pius has explained. There are going to be the control matrix that uh, describes how much control you have over each part of the plan. The interest matrix uh, describes <clears throat> what are the interests of your role, what is the agenda, what are the objectives of, of that role. And uh, I should hint that uh, this is the basis for your individual score. And finally, the difference matrix, which indicates the overlap of your control and interest uh, matrices. And uh, this can help you to negotiate and bargain with other players during the game. I will come back to this uh, later on when I'm describing the gameplay. The next step, uh -huh, the next step uh, uh, that is important is that there are a lot of uh, these eye icons all over the interface. You can uh, click them and there will be extra information uh, a bit more in detail than what I'm describing right now. So during the game, if you were not sure what is the meaning of each one of these elements, feel free to uh, check them out. Uh, after checking this, you can, of course, uh, click away or click on the X at the top right corner and it should click uh, close down the pop up menu. So the next panel is the control panel. <clears throat> uh, this is where you put in your individual decision each round. Uh, notice that this is a long panel. So if it is a bit crammed on your screen, you can uh, hit on control uh, minus on your keyboard and refresh the page. This would scale down the interface and you should be able to see the menu completely. Uh, the control panel has multiple sections, which I'm gonna go through one by one. The first one is the function allocation. This is a section with all the colorful slides. The important thing here is that we have divided the cable fabric uh, district into seven uh, smaller sites that we are going to plan for each one of them individually. In the information uh, panel, you can see a map of all of the sites, uh, the pink one being the skin, the blue one being the, the cyan one being the north wing, the central area being the green, uh, the green one, the dark blue being the central yard, the south wing being the, if I'm not mistaken, the yellow one, and the southern yard, the orange, and the purple is the cloud house yard. Each one of the sites has a slider that indicates uh, what uh, should be the proportion of different programs that we're allocating to that site. And the blue is residential, the purple commercial, pink cultural, public uh, functionalities are orange, and gray is going to be empty. The main part of your individual decision in each round is to proportion different functions in different sites. And of course, this should be in uh, relation to your interest matrix. Going forward, uh, the next part uh, of your decision is the weight of different factors in the massing process. Uh, based on your decision, we will generate a massing for uh, the whole uh, district. And this massing process is going to be based on a couple of factors that are specified here. First one being the existing building, which indicates how much spaces uh, within the existing building are prioritized over, over uh, the other spaces. Second one being the uh, closeness to the ground, which controls how much uh, the massing would rise or stay close to the ground. Uh, the next one being the daylight, which specifies how much uh, spaces with better daylight are uh, prioritized. The next one, the shadowing, which prioritizes the spaces that do not uh, overshadow the neighborhood. And finally, uh, we have closeness to the boundary that prioritizes uh, special units that are closer to the boundary of each one of the sites. Uh, the last part of the decision is a comment that explains what were your motives behind this decision. This, is, this doesn't have any effect in the process, but uh, we would appreciate it if you put what were your general ideas in a couple of phrases so we can come back later and assess the whole uh, decision-making process. 
Uh, after you're done with your decision, you can click on the submit and the game engine will await all the players to submit, the, submit their decisions before processing the whole plan. Uh, you can see information regarding how many players are left, left to submit their decision at the bottom. And in the meantime <clears throat> that you're waiting for other players, you can edit your decision and resubmit it as many times as you like, of course. <clears throat> Uh, the last part and uh, the last uh, menu is the information panel, which uh, gives you access to various info informations and visualizations regarding the game. The first one being the, uh, se selecting the visualization of uh, different visualization that we have prepared for you. For example, you have access to many layers here, for example, uh, where is the existing building or how voxels are valued with respect to each one of the criteria that we mentioned or what was the assignment that we had for the last round of the game and so on and so forth. Uh, the bottom part of the information panel uh, visualizes all the four different scores that we are uh, evaluating in the game. Uh, three of which are group scores and are shared between all the players. The first one being the environmental that measures uh, how much the plan complies with environmental factors such as daylight and overshadowing. The second one is the change. Uh, this measures how intensive the intervention will be and uh, it will be higher if the new plan does not uh, require much change or intervention within the existing site. And the last one being the closeness, the measures, that measures how accessible are functions from one another, how the distance between them is regulated. The final score is the individual score that uh, measures how much you were successful in achieving the objectives of your role, which has been indicated within the interest matrix, of course. And finally, there will be uh, some badges that will be distributed based on individual performance and strategy that you would have. So I would leave that to surprise that you will get them and there will be extra information of them as you play along. Uh, now that you're familiar with the interface, uh, we can go through a scenario of playing the game together to make it a bit more tangible, exactly how the game is played. Uh, at the beginning of a round, a player needs to start from the matrices and check them. Here I have a screenshot of all the three matrices that are available. And uh, in this case, you can see uh, an example of the matrices for a role that is heritage researchers. We unfortunately don't have this role within this game, so I can easily share the matrices. These matrices are actually really important information and you should keep them secret. So as indicated in the control matrix, uh, this role is very much influential uh, in cultural spaces and a bit on public spaces across all the sites. Uh, the interest matrix specifies that the researcher is very much interested in allocating a lot of public spaces in all of the sites. And the difference matrix indicates on the, the, most, uh, the most right one, indicates that the role may have extra leverage on the commercial and cult cultural functionalities indicated in green, but the, but the heritage researcher need to persuade other players to help them with achieving their goal by allocating the public spaces. So uh, first they start from representing their interest directly in the decision slider. If you check the proportions are quite similar to what is specified in the interest matrix. I, again, I have placed the interest matrix on the right. They have a bit of uh, preference for residential. That is the blue on the left, which are the sliders. And they have a lot of preference for uh, cultural and public. So they have, uh, they have a bigger proportion in each one of the sites. And they would continue from this point on to check out the Yes, check out the difference matrix. They know that uh, all their objectives, they cannot achieve them, all of them through their own individual control because they do not have enough control over the public spaces. So they start negotiating with other players to see which one of them has over uh, leverage over these areas. And in this case, the player uh, needs to find someone that actually has a lot of control over the public spaces. They ask around and they can figure out that the developer has the leverage, but in return, the developer is asking for uh, support for commercial spaces in the skin and North Wing and Central Area. So the researcher uh, 
can, can of course accept or reject, but if they accept, they need to compromise. And by compromising, they would add <clears throat> a bit of extra space for commercial spaces inside the uh, three sites that the developer has been asking for. And after they have decided this, uh, the researcher can now move to specifying the massing criteria as he's in favor of preserving most parts of the existing building. He will increase the weights of the existing uh, and boundary closeness. And the player then leaves some uh, comments regarding their decision and hits the submission button. So then uh, after submission, they can see how many other players are left to submit their decision. And when all the decisions are submitted, the game engine will process the decisions, uh, generate a new massing, and we evaluate the scores. And this may take up to a minute. <clears throat> when processing is finished, a new massing is generated. Uh, in the massing, colors of the voxels corresponds to the colors of the function. We can check them out. And also, in addition, uh, the player can uh, check the information panel to see the new score with respect to different KPIs. Um, there are also game badges that each player will receive based on their performance. You can check the meaning of each one of the badges as well. And based on the scores, the players have gained in each one of the round. Uh, they can think about what they need to do in the next round and what should be their strategy to increase their score and so on and so forth. So uh, without further ado, maybe uh, we can jump into the game. And if there's any question, I would be happy to answer as well. I'd like just to intervene quickly. It is a lot of info to take in. Yeah. It seems like it's, it's harder than it is in reality. So just don't worry, there, there is going to be a flow in the game and uh, you're going to be all right after all. So the main idea is that uh, we have these six rounds and uh, we we'll begin now with three rounds and then we have a short break. And each round, one of the players is the facilitator of the round. They will need to negotiate with the, other, with the others um, according to their interests. So the main questions for you, players that are leading uh, the round, is what do you need and uh, what can you offer the other to get what you need from the other? You know, if I'm, if I'm the mayor and I want to, to communicate with the community, so I'll tell the community, so I need uh, more cultural spaces in these in this areas and the community reply to me, oh, I cannot offer you that, but I can offer you something else. You know, so this is how the negotiation will um, keep moving forward. But uh, before we start, I think, Shervin, it's nice if the players identify themselves now because they have received some secret emails and now they know who they are and what to do. Hopefully, if not, we will all find out together. So, Shervin. I think so. That would be great. So first, I think we have Elaria. Elaria, what is your role? Hi, everyone. I'm the inhabitant. Okay, welcome. And uh, we have also Katrina. Katrina, what is hey, your oh, name? I think I'm a mayor, am I not? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you're right. You're we right. have the mayor. The mayor's in the house and you <laughs> knew it. Amazing. Oh, then, uh, we have uh, Mikhail, if I'm pronouncing uh, your name. Yeah, Michael. Hi, everyone. Michael. I'm the developer. Cool, nice Michael, developer yeah. is also an important I'm voice. make money. <laughs> yes, it's all about the money for you. Let, let's see how the community reacts. The mayor may be by your side. Okay, our, who next else? Player, our next player is Simon. Welcome, Simon. Yes, uh, I'm Simon and I am the architect. Okay, which is nice. Simon is an architect himself and also a gamer. So he's like the, the perfect player. Yes, that's right. Thank um, you, Simon. And I've uh, worked at my architects actually, so that's even better. Oh, wow. Oh, oh no. that's <laughs> that idea, not even more exciting. Okay, who else, sir? Uh, the last player is a joint uh, position for the neighbor, and it's Sebastian and Rosioka. Okay. So Please identify can... yourselves. Don't be yeah. shy. Oh, here, Sebastian, here as neighbor. Yeah, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, they're, they're the concerned citizens, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, maybe I can 
I don't know if I should mention this, but the, the, the reason we put Katrina in charge of the, the, the municipality is twofold. First, that she works actually for a municipality, threefold actually. Then she has a background in gaming <laughs> herself and developing a game. And the third one is a joke that we had, we used to have in geomatics, which was about what is the hardest thing to do in GIS. And the answer was to bring the mayor behind the GIS system. Now we are literally doing that. <laughs> and the mayor in this case is a GIS expert. So okay, am I gonna be I'm gonna have to be stubborn right here. Okay, okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> And, I, and also, Ilaria is developing a PhD thesis on participation and heritage studies. So she is also the perfect fit for representing the inhabitants. And Vasilka and Sebastian is a joint uh, effort. Also, um, students looking up to understand being neighbors, being you know in the TU Delft, also representing that role perfectly. Okay, so who should start, Shervin and Pirus? Um, I think it would be nice if we have, uh, because we have, for example, Marcher, Eda, Aditya, uh, and it would be nice if uh, each one of the players or they, they can have supporters as well, and the supporters can help them in the negotiation process, and they can also follow up the process, because we are going, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of information, and the discussions can be uh, facilitated better. If I, yeah. Well put, Shervin. So, so all the others, uh, you are entitled already now as supporters. So you just pick a side, or you can just maybe choose sides during the play. It might be also interesting. So think about that. But then the way you communicate with the players through uh, the chat, the private chat here on Zoom. Okay. So you just pick one of the players and help them throughout the the negotiations. Um, I, I know that we are kind of behind the schedule a little bit, but uh, since the group is relatively small and we have a full panel of experts, so maybe I can introduce a few more of the people in the room. Great. Is there, Michael van der Meer is the director of the Science Center, so he's the best developer we could possibly have, <laughs> who is uh, socially engaged with science and citizens. And uh, my colleague, uh, Michiel Susebeck from San Goban is very much into evaluation frameworks. Aditya is a former uh, student and a hero of, of developing games. Ada is a very good student from a course in which we do similar things and she has done a great job before. Jacek is uh, very much into uh, developing games and he's doing a great job for developing games based on Lego. And I think you got introduced to everyone else. Ah, Marce. Marce is uh, <laughs> one of our heroes behind the curtain. She's developing so many cool things for using the, the geospatial open data of the Netherlands for making digital twins. So I think, ah, Conchita, sorry. Uh, nice to meet you. We've never met before. Maybe you can introduce yourself. So. Um, I'm a student at TU Delft. I'm doing communication design for innovation, and I also follow the course on game design. So that's right. Here. Thank you. So happy to have you all here. So uh, let's get started. And please join, as Shervin said, to any group that uh, kind of uh, piques your interest. And you can you can act as helpers, help them interpret the matrices. It's uh, quite a lot of work. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. Also, if you join the particular group and you wanted to access the matrices, you can message me in the Zoom and I can send them through the private chat in the Zoom the credentials so you can actually check the matrices. Hey, nice. Okay. So let's start this. Okay. Amazing. I'm thinking about who, who, should, who should start. I think Hilary should start. What do you think? Ilaria, you up for the yes. challenge? You've been with us before. I'm uh, up to the challenge. Yes. Uh, maybe, maybe Bruno, maybe we can reassure them that, that nothing explodes if they submit the wrong decision, right? Exactly. So yeah, the, the interface is new for you. So you will be navigating throughout the game. You will be learning, of course, at each round. And Ilaria was with us in the in one of the sessions, the test sessions. So it's good that she starts and uh, 
So you know, feel free. Uh, I, I don't think you need to share your screen unless you want, but it's something like you, you can also have a hidden agenda. I don't know. But um, so, so the idea is that now you, you pick each of the players of the stakeholders and you, you will have, let's say, up to 10 minutes to negotiate with the, the four of them and, and then submit the proposals the first round. Okay, Laria, okay. the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> so... I can imagine we're all sitting at the same table so that I'm uh, picturing it. <laughs> so hello everyone today. I mean to, to represent uh, my fellow, you know, uh, the fellow inhabitants uh, of the city of Delft. Um, and uh, I, well, first uh, I would like to talk with the, to address the architect in the room, because um, uh, I know most probably you uh, are gonna have a lot to say about the skin of the building and uh, um, you know the whole uh, redevelopment process for what concerns the 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 you know the the. the physical, but the materials, uh, the existing materials, uh, let's say. Um, so what, what do you think about uh, the uh, residential uh, repurposing of some of these structures? Well, I think that's a good idea. Um, I think that, uh, that it livens up the area with uh, people actually living there taking responsibility of the of the building and, and the skin of the building. So I uh, think uh, making it uh, residential is a, is a good idea. Yeah, um, I totally agree with you. And uh, do you have similar interests, for instance, in the southern wing or in the uh, southern yard? I think so. Um, yard is, of course, very nice to, to live. Uh, next to because uh, because you can have some some open space and some windows uh, I think that's what at least residents would like um, so no uh, no problems with the residential there as well okay and uh, I mean um, now uh, thinking together with the the developer I think uh, maybe I can count a new architect when uh, uh, we say that. Uh, Wherever, wherever we have people living there, we also need some uh, cultural, um, uh, well, uh, offer. Uh, we need entertainment for people living there, right? Uh, especially in the southern part, the southern yard, southern wing, uh, uh, but also in the central yard, um, I'd say. Yeah, that's I mean, also a good idea. I, I, I would like to at family. least have some empty space because that that would be uh, that would make the the spaces more interesting to uh, to live in and to to work in. So uh, I, if that's okay with you, then I'm fine with dividing the rest of the area over or the other functions. Uh, but that's uh, that's great. Yes, absolutely. I'm with you. Uh, I totally agree. We should have some empty space and public space in that <laughs> same area. If we return quickly to the to the skin question, um, you you are aware that if you put only residential on the skin, uh, there's going to be issues with potential noise uh, because this is quite close to the rail. Uh, wouldn't it be smart to actually have a bit of a mixture between uh, let's say residential and maybe commercial uh, on the skin? Also, that would help to attract additional visitors to this whole development, as uh, you will not have like a giant mass of houses and a private yard in the middle. I completely agree with having some commercial functions, uh, as long as we also keep some empty space as well for the same purpose. I mean, uh, I don't totally agree with what you were saying. Uh, it needs to be also a quiet area. Maybe yeah. the the, uh, the neighbors uh, can say something about that. I would like, like some more commercial in the skin, definitely. And what about empty spaces? Are you interested? Uh, you know, for 
Well, from my point of view, I believe it would be more interesting to have empty spaces and uh, in this area, as already was mentioned, we don't have much entertainment, so it would be interesting to have more empty so we can use for, uh, uh, yeah, just as a area to seat or just for buying. So uh, how are we planning to distribute empty space? Because we are, are we currently talking about leaving some empty space on the skin? Um, or are we talking more about leaving empty spaces in existing yard areas? Or what is the proposal currently? Well, if I may say something as a developer, um, in, in the skin, I, I really like to have more commercial uh, functions than residential functions. Um, I want to have activity uh, all day long. Um, so the suggestion about some cultural functions, I agree, but not too much because um, cultural functions uh, cost money and uh, with the commercial uh, functions, well, we create also activity, but also income. I uh, concur. But then should we concentrate uh, the more cultural and uh, uh, the cultural activities uh, uh, and public space uh, in the southern uh, yard and the central yard? Did I understand well that that's uh, our common interest in keeping that area more lively throughout the day, not just through commercial uh, activities? Um, um, I would say it needs, uh, from Mary's perspective, we would like to have uh, culture activities around the Southern Yard and Southern Wing, indeed, and a bit less, indeed, uh, I concur with the developer, uh, less in the skin. Um. Uh, well, uh, as a developer, I, I don't want to have quiet areas which are uh, hard to maintain and to keep up the quality. So. I would really propose that 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 we have um, commercial functions um, well distributed uh, over, over the train, and maybe uh, some more uh, um, bars or restaurant functions near the, uh, the residential areas, uh, and and maybe some commer uh, commercial and cultural functions uh, mixed. Um, so I, I really like to have uh, activity uh, going on uh, in the entire area all time, so that the residential areas are in daytime, not deserted. Uh, I agree. Uh, what about uh, the building up of the existing yard areas? Because um, I think from my perspective, I would like to keep this as a public space mm -hmm. um, uh, and thus indeed uh, distributing uh, commercial areas and cultural areas around um, yeah, the existing built up, so the skin, north wing, central area, southern wing, that would be acceptable to me. Yep. Um, I would potentially propose uh, increasing the culture value in the Kruithuis uh, yard. Yeah. yeah. Um, that That'd would be, also yeah. fit quite well with, uh, with the public uh, uh, function as well. So sorry, it would. Uh, I agree. Sorry. sorry. Yep. Just, just a little reminder for, for the inhabitants. You have um, one more minute to, to finish the round, and then everyone, while you're talking, it's important you go in, in the platform and start to to change the functions and, and the measurements so that you, by the negotiation, you are seeing what it looks like for you. But then this is uh, the inhabitants round. So how do you, do you wrap up, uh, Ilaria? Yes. Uh, Bruno, one question: the colors. Um, I, I can see uh, what, what, what means the colors, uh, I forgot. And the sliders. You, if you click on the eye, small eye icon on top of the, the color from oh, yes. there is a Oh, eye. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. Great. Uh, right, to wrap, yes, to wrap up, uh, I, I think this was a very fruitful discussion. Concerning the very last points you touched on, uh, I would like to add that from an uh, inhabitant perspective, I think the crowd house yard should be left mostly empty 
Um, I know you wanted to have some cultural activities there, some public space, uh, but I think it's uh, very important uh, not to overload the area and uh, and link some spaces to breathe and walk around uh, for free interactions. So pub public, but not necessarily, you know, as a aggregating uh, spaces and uh, also concerning the central yard uh, I think it would be important to um, to have some cultural and public activities there as well uh, also balanced with empty spaces um, but Yes, I think for, that for everything else, we found a pretty good balance. So thank you very much for hearing me out Just, uh, and for your contribution. I hope we can translate this into the matrixes because I yeah. have not followed One this. more thing <laughs> just to add to the pressure. I think you also need to make a decision about the massing criteria and we can all have a say. If you don't make a decision, the machine will make a decision, right? <laughs> so uh, the machine will, will uh, rate them all equally. So uh, just to show you where they are, again, as a reminder, these are the, the massing criteria. How much do you care about shadowing on the neighbors? How much do you care about daylight? Do you want this to be a tall building or do you want to preserve the existing structure, which probably entails that you are in favor of keeping some of the heritage on the site? Mm -hmm. so. So back, back to you, Ladia, final call on the suggestions on the massing criteria, and then everyone, please vote. Go, Ladia. Okay, that I have to say that that's the most complicated part to me always had. Yes. <laughs> yes, because... So you could, we could focus, like one, one aspect that you would like to explore and the others to follow. Okay, then uh, I think as an inhabitant, uh, I would like to uh, avoid high-rise uh, structures. Uh, so I would avoid redevelopment that uh, shadows um, uh, existing uh, buildings uh, and uh, make a good use of daylight um, so that we can enjoy cultural activities and public space there. Fantastic. Thank you so much. The inhabitants have said, now you all have like one minute, let's say maximum to submit your proposals and the machine will run. We will get to know who are the, the awards of this round. <laughs> curious, um, curious, you know, who wants some badges? Don't forget, lots of empty culture public spaces in the yards. Okay, the, ma the mayor had actually <laughs> less say after all. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, it's really real. So how are you guys doing in terms of submitting? Anyone did it already? You have to be patient with us on the first round. It, uh, the, you have to get a lot of uh, information in with public and cultural and uh, commercial colors. It's true. You're totally right, Mayor. I'm so sorry to pressure you. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're just slow in the municipality, you know? I know. I know. I totally understand. So take your time, but not too much time. You can see some focus concentrated faces michael's really <laughs> focused some developer face i see there mm -hmm. the mayor is also really focused the architects totally there the inhabitants are already making notes of who they're going to work together or not let me see the neighbors, Sebastian and Vasilka. So I hope you are also chatting with each other. And so making a collective decision. And the supporters uh, can actually jump in and, and say something or type in the chat, the general, the, the particular. So Eda, Conchita, Ditya. Yasek, Marche, Michiel. 
uh, I just want to mention that up to now, Eda has uh, contacted me mm -hmm. and uh, he has joined the architect, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Eda? Uh, okay. Aditya has joined the neighbors. Is that correct, Aditya? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. um, also, Conchita has joined the developer. Is that correct, Conchita? Yeah. Second yes. year. Really nice. Okay. Any chance we could get uh, our interest in control matrices uh, separately in, in, in a screen while we're discussing and having the control panel, panel at the same time? Uh, can you repeat the question, Katrina? Sorry. Yeah, Sherman, could you send the the, uh, the matrices that we are currently having? Because it's a bit hard to uh, control the panel and also remember your interests at the same time. <laughs> ah, good point, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've taken screenshots and I'm trying to like split my screen between all of the different screenshots and the website. Good point. Let me quickly grab that as well. Uh, where's my paint? <laughs> See, just like reality neighbors helping mayor and vice versa. <laughs> we are mimicking the reality. All right. Yeah. By the way, the control matrix is what you see on the screen. There is no hidden agenda for helping any, any other player. So your control is what, exactly what you see on your screen. Okay, yeah, but I think, I, think, I think the UI could use some work in terms of functionality. Hmm. That's true. It would be amazing if you have a particular feedback to give it to us, maybe even during the process to me directly or at the end of it. We would yeah. love to develop this further, of course. Heating Thank pan you. testing. Oof. OK, how is it going, the submission? Is anyone ready? Ilaria looks, she's ready. Did you submit already, Ilaria? No. No, no, just a second. It's really, I also, I also took a screenshot, um, you know, neighbors, uh, neighbors, uh, like inhabitants. Not only inhabitants are super good with uh, um, uh, technology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying it's to uh, equally represent everyone. <laughs> it's true. That's a good point, inhabitants. Thank you for sharing your, your face. Just once more, the worst thing that can happen is losing a badge, so nothing exposed. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, everybody wants their badges. Come right, on. it's true. I must say during the, the testing session, I was the one that won the most badges. So in case you really want one badge during the game and you're not getting it, just text me in private, I might consider. Yeah. You can ask Bruno <laughs> for advice, how to, how to earn the most badges. <laughs> But this is a, it's a funny thing that this is a game about participation and that you can win badges so that you can be better than another person. Or I, you have a good point, Michael, but it's, it's not um, the badge. It's more like to give you feedback mm -hmm. if in the, that particular uh, aspect of the game you manage to understand. It's more like a learning uh, feedback mm -hmm. than a badge to show that you are uh, better or, or worse than any player in reality. Yeah, but, but yeah, again, I understand. But 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 that's the game. That is the exciting uh, fun. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. opposing interest and who wins. Exactly. So this aspect of uh, cooperation and competition, as in reality, it's so subtle. Yeah. And sometimes like stakeholders, they cross this and they are cooperating, then they are in competition in another proposal. So it's also a way to um, represent that and, and give another gaming element to the simulation. Uh, you know, it's more of a gaming simulation than a, a game itself uh, with all the, the rules and obstacles and so on. Nice point. Thank you, Michael. And um, Sipirus is managing the chat and um, 
Okay, let's see how this is going. And the supporters, are you really supporting or how is it going? Who wants to share something? Conchita, Eda, or Aditya? How's your supporting role going? You are all muted. I'm sorry, I'm muted. Uh, I must say it's kind of hard because we can't really see the interface. So I received the screenshot from Simon and that's what I'm working with, but. Nice. Uh, have you tried uh, signing in, Edda, with the uh, uh, credentials that I have provided for you? So you can actually uh, see You that. haven't sent me any credentials. You haven't? Nope. <laughs> well, he thought he did and he will check it out now. I will send it to you again in the direct so private chat. Okay. Great. So then you can also access the interface. So this is why also we are measuring with you guys how this is going. In our pilot gaming finale testing. Let's see you guys for feedback and advice. All right. Let's see. I see the mayor is smiling. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if I should be, but. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see after this round or after the results, what's going on your way, Miss Mayor? Who is in the ends of uh, submitting the proposal? I've submitted. Okay, great. The inhabitants did. And also, I saw a thumbs up from Sebastian. Yeah, I've yes, I've submitted. I'm just I submitted as well. Also, Michael, all I right. submitted in 30 seconds. I'm, I wasn't aware I could think about it that long. <laughs> that's great, Simon. That's that spirit of the architect. Practical. Let's just make a decision and go. Fantastic. And the mayor? Yeah, you know, it's we have to talk about everything in a municipality. So I know, you know, it's, and, and, and take three extra years to decide. So It's true. All the bureaucracy and uh, all yeah, the opinions and... and, and Anybody wants to submit a permit? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay. can, I, can I ask the inhabitant to click on the submit button again? I haven't received it yet on the submit. Okay. Inhabitants, they are getting to know still these platforms. The inhabitants sometimes have issues with computers and internet. Indeed. Can you see it yeah. now? Yes. Fantastic, yes. yes. This is just like it is in reality. And the mayor, have you been able to consult with all your um, consultants? I don't see any consultants uh, directly writing to me. So. You, don't, you don't have supporters. This is an absurd. We have other people, Marty, Jacek, or even Michiel. One of you, come on, support the mayor. No, it's okay. It's okay. You know, it's just, I will just support the inhabitants. It, it is a lonely job after all, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's well, I'm a currently lonely inhabitant too. So <laughs> come on, fellow inhabitants. It's true. <laughs> Join me. <laughs> so for doing well. So practically developing a gigantic estate for yourself, right? Yeah. <laughs> the single and earn all the money. <laughs> So Marcia Yasek, see if you can join either the mayor, one of you joins Katrina and the other joins Eladia. It would be really nice. So uh, Shervin the Merlin, how is it going on the other side of things? Who is missing? You are muted. So sorry. I just, I just received a, a request uh, from somebody. So should I be changing my opinions? Hmm. I yes. can't answer that. Ms. You should May. listen to the neighbors, Miss Mayor. Okay, okay, oh. all right. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. The developer. Hi, Sebastian. The developer. <laughs> neighbor. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm still don't I'm worry, don't worry. I'm sharing. taking you into account. Um, somebody on Twitch asked me if it's possible to share a screen. So maybe you can share your, your, your master screen. Yes, and keep, keep the faces also on the other side so that uh, mm, on, on yes. Twitch people see what's going on. Totally, I can do that. Allow me to open the screen. 
Thank you, um, Pyrrhus, for managing the chat. So I have a, a question. Maybe you, you already said it and I missed it. Uh, so now that I have a supporter, how do I share my metrics uh, with, the, <laughs> with my fellow inhabitant? Uh, your supporter is supposed to contact me and then I would be able to uh, give them the same credentials so they can actually access the matrices as well. Thank you. You can also make a screenshot using SNP, snipping, and it's very easy in Windows to uh, share an image. Yeah. And you can send it through Zoom, and there's a little share button, uh, which you can send directly to a person. Your oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic, Simon. Thank you so much. So have my screen on. we do, Merlin. And has, has everyone submitted already? Or are we waiting for the mayor? Thought I have submitted already. Okay. So can, can we run the, this round, Merlin? Uh, yes, let me double check. I think I'm still missing the, the decision from the developer. If you can click on the button again, if you have already yeah. submitted. Yes. Yeah, you, and also the architect. If you click on the button again, it should submit it again. All right. So Michael and Simon. Oh, is it, it's yeah, running, right? Yeah, it's running now. Yes. So. The decision analysis is running in the background now, so you should oh, be able fantastic. to get the massing soon. And also you would get the initial round of scores and also evaluations in the game info panel. So let's wait a bit. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, wow, what this is tall. <laughs> So just you couldn't get the thing. color, the, uh, le the legend of the colors, right? There's Yes, from the function allocation in the eye, you can click and get the legends. Yeah, okay, but, but you, also... have to, you have to close it again so you can not have it open at the same time. Ah, that's the whole problem, yeah. Uh, yeah. And another thing is that this round, the developer is going to be the host. Right. And... Um... Can, can you guys reveal if you got any badge? Where can they, I, can they see that, Merlin? Inside yes, the game info, they should be able to see the badge. I think I got a badge for contributor of the round. I'm not sure what that means. You can, you can read the description, but contributor is the person who has helped others in achieving their goals. Maybe. It's, Practically a do-gooder, right? So yeah. a good Samaritan or something like that. You did well, neighbors, so it makes sense. And who else got any badge? I certainly got one for the first time since I played this game. Yes. <laughs> Which one? I am player of the round and gainer of the round. Oh, wow. You did a great job. <laughs> really, really convincing. And, and everyone yeah. played mainly on your side. So by the way, the badges achievement. are given by the machine automatically. So uh, <laughs> it's perfectly objective, you know, based on the math magics of the game. Automatically. Yeah, thank you, I like that term. <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> thank you, everyone at the table for helping me. Fantastic. Thank you, inhabitants, for a good um, job managing this round. So it's nice when you are facilitating the round and you get uh, such badges. So now the developer, the floor is yours. And now we are able to run a bit quicker. So, Michael, the floor is yours. OK. Um, and, and we start all over again or from this uh, the, this uh, configuration, uh, Bruno, or? Because right now you have a decision and the, the result of the decision is very clear. I think it should be easier to start from this configuration okay. and negotiate okay. 
extra changes to this. Yeah, negotiate the small changes you need to serve you best and then convince the others to follow you uh, by offering something in return, let's say, in, in other rounds. Okay. Um, yeah, well, um, Mayor, um, I really like, uh, and, and I hope you agree, uh, agree uh, that we have, need some more commercial function on the skin. I see um, a few uh, few commercial around uh, function on, on, on the skin. What do you think? Um, I do not disagree that commercial shouldn't be in the uh, indeed on the on the skin. I think that's uh, a quite a decent proposal. Um, however, I do not have that big of a uh, how to say a say on this. Um, so I'm assuming that probably another player has to be involved to be able to reach a consensus on this point. Yeah, but um, maybe we together can talk to the uh, the inhabitants uh, and persuade them to um, have more uh, of of this commercial um, uh, spaces on uh, on the skin, and then uh, talk with the architect to uh, to have some more. Yeah, in this case. Uh, um, because otherwise I can I can really uh, not build uh, residential uh, spaces. Um, I, I've got to earn my money somewhere. Of course, of course. Um, I, I agree. Um, so it would be nice if we could uh, potentially reduce uh, the cultural on the skin and we could relocate this towards uh, the Kruidhuis yard. Would that uh, be acceptable for you? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I, I would say so because uh, the Kruidhuis uh, is also uh, a major um, cultural destination eh, and uh, an icon. So if, if we can, uh, and maybe we can have some, some restaurants and bars there as well. So it, it creates a nice atmosphere uh, in, in this area. Yes. So, um, do others help a little bit? Yes, I, I could help a little bit with the commercial uh, um, function on the skin. However, I my help, I have to say, is bound to the fact that we really leave the Kratos yard empty. I think it's crucial to the good balance of the whole uh, redevelopment pro uh, project. So what if uh, all these cultural initiatives uh, and uh, public spaces uh, are just kept to the central yard and the southern yard where we said that um, I mean are going to be more views for residents and uh, where we can also put some commercial activities, especially in the southern yard. Would so, that suit your interest? Uh, you want a lot of commercial activities in the southern yard. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so commercial activities uh, also balance with cultural and public space. So, so I would like to see that area more lively and the Kratos yard empty. I think we well, should keep the Kratos yard active along the river so that when you go for walks that it's a lot more lively so it doesn't become a dark corner no but if we concentrate the cultural um, uh, activities over there uh, then we can uh, put the commercial activity uh, on the skin and both uh, areas will have uh, continued activity during the day so in that case, we are removing majority of commercial activities from all the yards. Am I understanding this correctly? No, uh, I would keep uh, partly uh, also commercial activity in the yards, but concentrate uh, the majority on the skin. That is acceptable to me. Um, in this case, we can reduce the uh, commercial activities to some extent in the yards, increase the public and uh, cultural spaces there, and, and thus increase the possibility to add some commercial activities on the skin. Okay, 
uh, that would be fine. Um, but um, es especially, uh, and, uh, well, I, I, I would say that in the southern yard, I, I would have some commercial activity as well. Uh, and, and that we reduce then uh, in, in the wings, the north wing, south wing, and central area, we can reduce it there. And then we have it on the skin and in the southern yard. I fully support the mayor. And I like how the developer is uh, looking for compromises. So I, I like where the decision is going. Um, um, What's now the the final decision on the crack has uh, yard? I mean, can the uh, maybe the neighbors uh, come in support? Well, as a neighbor, I prefer the, to have the south yard more cultural and public, and yeah, maybe have the, the commercial area and more towards the skin. And yeah, focus on the on the crowd house yard as well, the culture and the public. But I'm open to negotiation as well. So, uh, but maybe, what about yeah, if, if I have too little space for commercial yard, I, I have to build more uh, in, in height and, um, well, need to create more living spaces so I can sell more, uh, more apartments. So um, it's, it's, it's really for, for, for me as a developer, uh, a balance between uh, uh, the commercial sites and, and, and the living uh, apartments. If I have too little space for my commercial uh, things, um, yeah, I, I need to build uh, higher, uh, higher flats. I think we should um, perhaps, if you do need more space, increase the north wing because um, it doesn't overshadow the site. See, do we even have that uh, control in here? Can we uh, do the massings of the of the specific areas? I don't think specifically. No. Um, you, if you increase the amount of empty space there, there would be less functions allocated, so there would be uh, less. Uh, mass of buildings over there yes you can do that all right so in that sense uh we can reduce the sizes i mean we still have at least in my control i can still uh, i still have some open space in the existing built area so the wings and the skin and the no just the wings and the area central area mm -hmm. uh neighbors um are you okay with um let's say increasing the um, commercial activities in these uh, these uh, areas? The North Wing and the yeah. Central area? No, uh, yeah. Because Central area also has a bit less of an effect for you since it's uh, not so much in the, in the boundary. I would agree for the Central area for the North Wing uh, I don't have that much interest. But yeah, since we, uh, we have a little bit more control in the empty area, uh, we can exchange perhaps on having more public on the skin. More exactly. public where? Sorry? Uh, on, the uh, on the skin, yeah. More public on the skin. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, so we have more well, cultural and public accessibility from the outside. And then we push the commercial and the residential to the center. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd really like to have some uh, commercial uh, activity on, on, on the skin. Uh, I definitely need that uh, because uh, companies want to have to, uh, to be seen, not, not hidden in, in the central part. Developer, so, I wonder if the architect can help you with that, the commercial yeah. use. Okay, architect. Do you have a suggestion? Simon? Well, I find my interest rates pretty hard to work with because they're very evenly distributed. So I actually want everything in all places equally distributed, even the empty space. So if that happens, I'm happy. 
So maybe a good compromise in the skin in the north wing could be to increase the residential and commercial areas, but also the empty areas. So that way we will be able to, uh, um, yes, have maybe some new structures, so build higher uh, in, in a way that doesn't uh, overshadow the rest of the existing structures, uh, but we also would keep the, a balance uh, and we would have a little bit of everything uh, and uh, satisfy our developer with his commercial wishes. I could help with the empty, uh, with uh, actually with all of them, with the residential, commercial and empty uh, functions. That would be that would be nice, I think. Yeah. Okay. So can we can't we just place some entire new volume above the building on stilts, so it doesn't affect the existing building? Because that's also what I don't want. Um, yeah, that's okay by me. If I can, can have a, a, a lot of apartments than than building, because putting them on stilts uh, is probably more costly. But it would give you a lot of more new square meters, and that's yeah. uh, uh, you can sell that. Okay. Well, that's that sounds okay to me then. Sorry, which property is this precisely? Are we talking about the existing reduce reducing the existing uh, weights in the massing criteria? Well, we could leave a lot of empty space in 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 the existing building and keep the the character of the existing building if we just build. An entire new structure on top of it, like the uh, uh, Unilever building. Um, just put it on stilts, high, maybe a bit disconnected a bit. You have a lot of square meters, and you keep the existing building and have opportunity for a lot of free space. So I'm not sure if we, if the simulation allows to input this, but I think as an architect, I can propose something out of the box, right? <laughs> <laughs> So we're building higher, and um, I can compromise on on the commercial areas than in uh, on the skin because I sell more apartments. Fantastic developer! I think it's time for you to wrap up, and overall also include now the messing criteria that it would you would like to prioritize, and you guys start to submit your proposals. Any last words, developer, any last okay. wishes and compromises and promises that you might be fulfilling? Yeah, might. <laughs> or not. <laughs> In the last moment. Uh, so I think that, uh, that, that we have a little bit more commercial areas in the skin, but most uh, we uh, compensate the loss of commercial areas by making uh, more apartments. We put uh, some more in the north and the central area and um, putting there a bit more empty spaces. And the cultural, we concentrate in the Kruidhuisweg. Pop, pop, pop. Kruidhuis yard, right? Uh, Kruidhuis yard, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah will be cultural and public activities. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ooh, wait, let me quickly check. Nice. It's time to face Emergentium. So start submitting your proposals, please. Participants. Let's see if you're going to make the developer happy or not. How was this round? and your supporters. Who are supporting you, Michael? At the moment, nobody, but well, developer is, uh, I want to have all the money for myself, of course. <laughs> <laughs> then it, it makes sense to work alone sometimes. I'm a capitalist. Uh. <laughs> so I have received the decision of this round from neighbor, and also I have received it from mayor until this point. If you have submitted, but I have not received it, please click on the button again. OK. 
Okay, so I, uh, it doesn't yes, do anything. I yeah, I click on the submit button. Yeah, I got it from developer as well. Yes, it's here. It it happened for you, okay, Michael. Yeah, I believe it. Believe in Bergantium. Yeah. Uh, so we here in the other side of things uh, decided because the game has its own flow, we can never really predict, and uh, that we're going to have a five minute break after this round. So if you already submitted your proposal, you can already have your break, but just don't take too long. But officially, after the last one submits, we have five minutes and we come back for probably one last, uh, last round. By the way, this is not gambling, but if you submit your decision, you have a higher chance of getting a badge. So it's <laughs> true. Did you receive my like my submission? I'm checking right now. Berlin. I have got it from developer, from neighbor, from mayor, from architect. And yes, from everyone. So, everyone, why aren't you running? Double check. Yes, they're running actually. It's running? Yes. Okay. So, okay. Merlin put a spell on all of you. You have five minutes break to go grab a coffee, dance a little bit, or scream, cry. Um, Amazing. All these things that you do in a meditation group. And uh, yeah, so see you in five. Two, five minutes. Cheers, thank you. Bruno, I will join you. Shall we please join Bruno in that room? I think we could try. We try yeah. to mute or mute ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Let's give it a try. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. See you, see you there. See you.
Okay, everyone. Okay, okay, nice. So the, the three of us, we are here in uh, at BK, the architecture building of the TU Delft. And um, we were in separate rooms and now we are trying to uh, all of us be together in the same table. I don't know. C can you show us, Shervin? Uh, um, I got the stand that I'm trying to do. Shervin is as, um, reconnecting. I'm just a bit afraid of moving my, my laptop. But I just want him to show in the meantime as the others join our setting. So Shervin is against the window. That's why you can see his silhouette. Okay. You have the screen? Yeah. One thing that I want to mention is that now inside the game info, you should be able to check last assignment as well to check what has changed from the previous round until this round. Is it correct that basically nothing has changed? Based on what I can see is that a couple of public spaces are added into the screen. Uh, also, there are a couple of cultural spaces in the skin as well. I can see them. Moreover, I can see some residentials being added to the north wing. And furthermore, let me double check again. Yes, some residentials have been removed from the southern wing. If I'm not mistaken, what else? Yes, also we have more uh, public spaces available in the cloud house. Yes, but the major changes are in the skin. Well, makes sense if developer is uh, hosting. So, but what I'm very curious about is that who has got the most, uh, who has got the badges this round? I got them again. Okay, Elaria, which ones? Both of them? Uh, the player of the round and the gainer of the round. Oh, wow. Okay, that's interesting. And who got the contributor of the round? I, I got the contributor of the round again. I think I um I need to act a lot more in my self-interest and uh, really push hard on my priorities. Um, okay, interesting. This also happens because you take a lot from last, the last round to this one, you know, to, to make sure that these badges are redis redistributed, sorry, you need to um, work on the, the masses and uh, fine tune your best interests in the in this round. So, Sherwin, do we have the software indicate anyone to for the next, or should we pick uh, yes. to lead the next round? The next round is the neighbor. So the neighbors will be leading the next and probably final round. And uh, if you want more badges this time, you just you need to make sure that your interest and then your power is, is in fine tuning. Um, and also, you you in order for you to take these badges out of the inhabitants, you need to mess a little bit with their interests and and uh, how they are keeping the the pace at this point. So look at your matrix and make sure you negotiate with the other stakeholders accordingly. So let's move to our final round. And uh, so please neighbors, the floor is yours and you interchange between their Sebastian and Vasilka, see how you guys do that. Let's do it. All right, I think, um, I see we still have a lot of uh, residential in the skin, but I was thinking we could move that into the North wing. 
So we increased the residential in the north wing in order to get more public and cultural uh, in the skin. Because I think the residents can still live on the inside and then have the shared facilities facing outwards and more accessible. So your proposal uh, is creating in creating these public and cultural uh, on the outside? Yeah. Rather than uh, rather than commercial, for instance, in the skin. Uh, yeah, well, and rather than the residential, I think the residential can be pushed further into either the north wing or the one of the yards. I do not agree that residential should be in the yards. Um, I think public spaces are way more suited for this for this area as well as uh, cultural spaces. From my position, at least, as a mayor. Okay. Yeah, as, as, as a developer, um, well, I can see that you want to have the residential more inwards, but I would uh, uh, reserve the skin for the commercial and as well as for the for residential. But I can put more uh, commercial in, in the skin, but I won't uh, well, push it away for, for more public or cultural uh, functions. Well, okay. uh, I, still... I support. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say that I support the mayor and somehow agree with the developer. I think that if we keep the skin more, um, you know, if we want to engage also with the neighbor, with the neighborhood, uh, then uh, and with the rest of the inhabitants, uh, we need to offer commercial services uh, on the on the outer spaces on the skin and uh, keep the um, um, cultural and public, uh, uh, well, public space in the in the wings and certain and central area, but the real cultural core of the old uh, uh, project, I think it should be in the yards. So that's, uh, I'm also in favor of having more commercial and empty spaces in the skin. Well, I think the, the skin is a, a great envelope for the whole scheme. And as you walk past the site, you want to sort of be drawn in by the shared functionalities instead of, well, the residential will just put up a facade that is all private and the commercial isn't necessarily as attractive. And if you are coming there to go shopping, then you're probably coming there with a purpose and it's fine for them to be located more centrally. So we can have more attractive uh, activities in the skin well um if, if you talk about shops uh people have to see them from the outside so um i i really need to have the shops on on uh, in the skin but if if people are going shopping then they probably know where they're going so it's fine to put them inside no but, but if, if we have a very nice cultural uh place as as in the Kruithuis yard and people walking by uh, along the ski well, they, they just see a shop and maybe are invited to, to walk in. So uh, I really want to have them on, on the skin. But I think the, the, the more public aspects are much more inviting than a shop. It's a sort of just commercial activity. I'd rather where, have some more shared and cultural activities. Sebastian, where would you put the commercial activities if that was uh, to your choice? Uh, well, in the yard just more centrally or even the north wing um so in well either in the central yard or the south yard um, um yards i do prefer not to have as commercials uh, as a mayor uh but i could theoretically indeed increase uh public activities uh on the skin um to suit your goal and you also proposed increasing increasing commercial activities in the north wing. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that acceptable to everybody else uh, that we increase uh, uh, the commercial activity in the north wing and we add a little bit of um, what would they say? Uh, culture of public. Uh, <laughs> Does it matter for you? <laughs> I well, it's a bit mixed. Um, so yeah, whatever fits with your interests as well so public or cultural yeah then if i could add to that uh, i'd rather to have public 
spaces in the north wing rather than cultural activities. Yeah, but I'm completely on board with increasing the commercial ones. Well, could we put well, those public? Wing? The public I and the can skin. agree with more uh, commercial activity in the north wing, but I would, don't want to uh, diminish them on, on the skin. And I, I really uh, want to keep a, a high commercial profile on the skin. Um, so we also have a choice to, of course, reduce the empty space if you still have some on the skin. Uh, and instead of that, uh, we could have more public. However, I would uh, suggest that we do not reduce the empty space completely as that also increases the footprint of the building. Okay, um, well, maybe then compromise then, then uh, increase activity on the skin, hey, reduce the empty space uh, um, and, and maybe augment then uh, the public function yeah. on the skin. So uh, so, so in, instead of having empty space. Exactly. We, we eliminate most of the empty space on the skin and then replace it public. Okay. Yeah, but then... have some empty space as well. And I was actually thinking about putting a tower in the Kalethuis yard, which is a very slim 100 meter tall tower, which connects with the chimneys next to the ski. And it, it serves as, a, as an attraction point for, for people so that they know that there's activity going on there, uh, like, like the shops and the the cultural activities. So I'm not sure if we can place a hundred meter tall chimney-like tower. Well, as a, as a developer, I, I really like it. We, then, then we have a, a landmark. A landmark is a good idea. Exactly, so yeah, a are landmark. We, are we choosing to increase height as a maximum massing criteria for this round? <laughs> well, if you put no, in a lot please. of height and you have a lot of empty space around it, which is nice for, uh, for uh, recreation and gives it a very nice atmosphere and outlook. So it's a good combination, I think. And what function and the does the house. yes? Yeah, sorry, but the crowd house yard, yes. Yeah, well, uh, it's not the uh, let's say the most dense in terms of uh, activities of any kind so far. So we we have kept it pretty empty. I thought that was a common strategy, and uh, on this concern, uh, I heard the mayor saying in previous uh, conversations that it would be good to have some uh, empty spaces also in the skin because otherwise it would be too crowded. If we have a lot of uh, uh, commercial activities and public spaces and uh, uh, cultural activities, as the neighbors were suggesting. Think, I'm afraid it's going to be really noisy and uh, okay we decided to uh, reduce the residential but there's still going to be residential areas in there I don't see how this is going to work well if we concentrated on the skin uh, well the in the inner spaces where the residential areas now are concentrated well uh, and 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 they live uh, on, on uh, in the height in the towers I think, um, well, it, it doesn't harm. Yeah, the, I totally agree. So I'm with you on the skin, as long as we keep the balance with the empty spaces as well. But let's leave the Kratos yard as empty as possible. Let's not build a tower there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it might not be a tower in the crowd house, but I still think we should have uh, some shared cultural and public activities there. I totally agree. Um, I would prefer to indeed primarily focus Kratas Yard as two functions indeed, and that would be public and cultural with a little bit of empty space, if that uh, suits you. Uh, yeah, a, a, a bit of empty space. Yeah, and, and a bit of, of commercial. Eh? We, we need a restaurant or a bar. Um, okay, so <laughs> you want commercial also in the Kratas uh, and Sorry, on well, the skin. We... Yes, yes. The well, thing is, if you put a tower there, which is very slim, you keep a lot of empty space around it. So you still have your empty space and you have a lot of program which you could put in the high rise and make a sky bar on top. So you have your commercial thing. So exact an excellent idea, uh, Mr. Architect. I'm very so, happy with you. Mm. <laughs> so wait, for, to create this, or I guess we have to increase uh, height in this case for the massing criteria? If you want, yeah, to but but we already the... have the high rise residential uh, building, so I I, I don't uh, see it. It hurts. 
if uh, sorry, yeah. a technical detail here. If you want to increase the height of the massing, you need to decrease the weight of the height as a constraint. So if you limit, if you decrease it, the buildings will be higher. If you increase it, the buildings will be lower. Just so you know. Ah, okay, okay. So it's the opposites. Okay. But then you have to decrease in uh, uh, existing, right? But the Krauthaus thing is, is empty at the moment. So there's no existing stuff. There is in. no existing. So yeah, existing... okay. So you can put full on height and, and then you, you still have a lot of empty space. Yes, you can do that. But then the thing is that if you want it to go high, well, you need to decrease the weight of the high. If you increase the weight of the existing, it wouldn't affect the Krauthaus because there is no existing piece there. So the weight over there is going to be multiplied by zero. So it wouldn't have any effect. Oh, so, so you have to decrease the weight of uh, height. To, to make it a bit uh, high rise. Yeah. yeah, okay. If you are going in that direction. Well, if we're just okay. building high, increasing the, you know, the unbuilt ground, I guess we're getting also better environmental factor. Is that correct? How is the environmental aspect uh, calculated? That, that depends. The environmental aspect depends on the daylight and the shadowing. In this particular case, because uh, it would not overshadow anything else because this is on the west side of the river and also to the north of it is just a river it wouldn't affect much the environmental factors so in that case basically we're saying that crowd house yard uh, could potentially have less empty space yes okay but then <laughs> the, that that may affect the individual scores of uh, different players that they have so of course, of course. We shouldn't forget that uh, I think architects wanted uh, all equal distribution, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, also, yes. and the neighbors also wanted uh, some empty space around things. Is that correct? Uh, a tiny bit, um, but I prefer just more shared cultural and public functions, generally. All right. I just really want to build everything full. No square meter left alone. So your empty interest is at zero, I guess, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> so but neighbors. I can compromise because I, I see we, we need a, a sound living environment. So uh, some empty space, um, I agree to, but. It's sensitive of you, uh, developer. So neighbors, it is time to wrap up any last words, you know, this sense or nonsense conversation on <laughs> what you started in terms of uh, verticalization or distribution of functions and where, any last requests? Well, I think we are somewhat in agreement that we want a few more cultural and public activities in the skin and uh, keeping the cloud house for the cultural and public and then trying to move the residential move towards the inner areas. All right, the neighbors have said, and now you have a couple of minutes to submit your proposal. So that we round off the game and jump into the final discussions. And just to mention that we are really happy and really proud and satisfied with uh, the gameplay and all your engagement so far. It's been delightful to, to see the game has its own flow. And uh, you guys have been amazing. So thank you already for uh, your engagement. If you want more badges, please submit <laughs> more decisions <laughs> once again. <laughs> And a question, Sherwin, uh, about the daylight, um, the waiting. Do we increase it for more daylight? Yes. Yeah. OK, thanks. OK, so has anyone did it already? Simon? I yes. I submitted it. Yeah, I submitted So Michael, OK. 
So neighbors and inhabitants. And what about the mayor? I have submitted, yes. Okay, the mayor is really quick now. Things are really working on right there. Yeah, yeah, I'm already writing uh, tips on how you can improve this. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you, Mayor. You and your team are really amazing. And, uh, we're yes. counting on you for some advice and see how can we apply this in The Hague probably next. <laughs> And in Brazil, with Vasilka there in Manaus, um, maybe in Belgium, in Antwerp. Maria, have you submitted? Can you click on the button again, please? Yes. Okay. Can you see now, it now? I think it has started, if I'm not mistaken. Hasn't it, or no? Yes, it has started. It has started. Yes, what well, as Peter said before, the auto magic. <laughs> What's that there? Yeah. Automatically, this is running. Let's see who got new badges or if Ilaria uh, has conquered it all this time. Let's see. I'm really curious about that. And uh, about the players, have you been feeling supported by the supporters or they just were there? And um, how was this interaction? Right. I found it pretty hard to, to make decisions myself. So it was even harder for the supporter because she couldn't see the uh, even my screen. Um, True. So it's pretty hard to... To, uh, to, to interact to, in that to way. To interact, yeah. 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 Thank you, Simon. Yeah, I also find it really hard to like add anything valuable as you can see what happened or uh, yeah. Okay, nice. This is also something we can we can work further in the interaction of players and supporters. In the same it's difficult um, to message, yeah. listen, talk. It's a lot, right? The parameters, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It's the true. Messaging gets uh, it becomes uh, difficult. It's true. Yeah, moving this online was was a big challenge for us. Yeah, I'm actually life. wondering how the the game would have looked or played if it was physical. Would there have been cards, or would we sit around the table and not having to input on the on the screen, or would we still have to all be on on the laptop or something? Yeah, you would still be working on your laptops, but uh, we would have a map with some Lego bricks and uh, some colors representing functions. And you would have also printed uh, the power interest matrix and the supporters would be nearby you. So uh, you would be more dynamic and more clear in that a way to play. That would give a very much, a very different uh, gameplay, I think. Yeah. yeah. The interaction would be uh, uh, different because it's you look at each other in the eye and you have a different sort of compromise. It's true. Um, now you're talking to a screen. Um, so the togetherness, uh, because you really want to have to, to develop the area together. So yes. you don't have an atmosphere of togetherness. It's true. Mm -hmm. Indeed, we had three types of choice for the physical session, but... Uh... Because of the COVID situation, yeah. we had to cancel the physical part, but we had three types of toys to uh, construction sets to build something together. Mm -hmm. uh, let's hope we can do that in future. Yeah. <laughs> or use Minecraft, which is a digital yeah. Lego set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's your yeah. Minecraft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, may I add something, uh, Bruno? Uh, what I miss is uh, a representative of the wider neighborhood because this particular area on the ski ufers has uh, in uh, in the near future and uh, a connection with uh, the campus so what do uh, the university think of the development of this this neighborhood and do we need uh, certain functions as as an entity yeah the other neighborhoods uh, around it 
No, you, you totally have a point, Michael. The, the idea of the neighbors, in, in case we have a, a, a gameplay with a different kind of neighbors, definitely one, one important one is the Teu Delft and the, the real estate in Teu Delft, for instance, that are planning together with the city, the new urban development plan on how the campus relate with the redevelopment of the Xi and the, the city center. Yeah, because you have different scales. Uh, as uh, an inhabitant of, of one of the towers, I, I would look at my immediate uh, surroundings. What do I need? What do yeah. I think is comfortable? Yeah. Michael, this is a very interesting uh, thing that you mentioned. We actually had a different game. Uh, in 2019, we uh, developed and played a game with uh, people actually mimicking the role of uh, representatives of TU Delft about the fate of the campus of TU Delft. And there were some very heated discussions about what to do with the northern part of the campus, including our, our very uh, uh, building of Baukunde yeah. and the science center. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I, I think <laughs> because we are on air, maybe I should cut this discussion here, but uh, there were some heated discussions pro keeping and against keeping the northern part of the campus. Yeah. But that, that is indeed a very, very interesting dimension. The, the, one, one thing maybe I can ask you, do, do you think there will be a bridge over the river to the campus from, from this? Yeah, side? yeah, I, I thought it was planned. Uh, for pedestrians and cyclists, right? Yeah. Yeah, but not for cars. No, not for cars. Okay. I'm not mistaken, that's just a lime and culture, through lime and culture towards the yeah. Cabo Fabric, right? Yeah. Oh, ah, yeah. okay. That's a Sweet. cool place. Yeah. Lime and culture, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it could have uh, an enormous impact on the, on the campus, uh, at the developing yeah. of, of the ski overs, and it would give um, a lot of potential for startups, but also for keeping uh, the um, uh, uh, former students uh, in for the city of Delft and, and developing of uh, or development of business, mm -hmm. and hopefully more cultural activity as well. The simulation yeah. seems to be stuck. Am I wrong? Uh, on your right. Do you hear me? Uh, no, you're right. I'm having a technical issue. I would resolve it in a minute or two, so you would see the result. <laughs> Live debugger. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, please, I just updated the link for the Mentimeter, so you can already type in some keywords into how you would apply this simulation game to your own background studies and profession. And this will generate a word cloud that will um, help us better facilitate the, this final 10 minutes of discussions. And also I'll share the link for the, um, the more complete evaluation form that would definitely help us a lot to improve this game. Uh, maybe, maybe I can ask um, a general question about the interface and the logic of the game. So hypothetically speaking, if we had more uh, sliders for uh, mentioning your preferences about the, the importance of the quality criteria per each part of the site, would that be helpful or would that be too much to handle? I mean, the messing criteria for each yeah. specific yeah. area, I yeah. think that would help, or at least from my perspective. That, that would uh, give you more control. Yeah. How about having them for each color separately? Like for the for the residential, for the public, etc. Uh, so basically well, I think sorry. Oh, yeah, no, go on, go on. Oh, I should have not broken this over. <laughs> uh it it would be a lot of controls, I do agree. Uh uh, but not having these controls at all uh, do not allow us to create insane uh, giant, you know, skyscrapers or stuff that is floating above things. So that would be quite <laughs> interesting if you could, uh, if you wanted to indeed just expand it and control yeah. it separately. Okay, cool. We thought, we thought that this might be a little bit overwhelming, but now I, I sense from the discussions that some more control and the massing probably is desirable. Right. But could we, uh, do you mean by color? 
No, no, not by color, because I think if you have it only by color, uh, you, you will not have control where it is. Uh, uh, but then again, uh, it would also help you uh, with your interest. Let's say we want to, in general, increase the total uh, area or the masses for, for residential uh, or commercial. I mean, that for developer, that would be a useful tool to say, you know, I want to have in general more commercial in this in this area. Mm -hmm. Uh, in my point of view, I think for the sliders, it would be interesting not only for the matching criteria, but as well for the function location to have them separately, but not with the colors, but by name. Because, okay, like we, I can I can take a screenshot and be comparing all the time, but it would be much easier to have everything on one uh, window and it would be much easier. Because here when you are like sliding and you see like the proportion of it, it's not... Uh, I don't know, it's a bit confusing, at least for me, my, it's my first time like playing this, it's quite tough to be following everything and very mm -hmm. overwhelming. <laughs> I see, I see. To, so, be, uh, yeah. to be honest, I actually did not use a 3D visualization almost at all. It was primarily looking at the function allocations and maybe the game info, so indeed the mm -hmm. 2D interface. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's interesting to look on the right side to, to what's happening, but it's all about negotiating because you get you get points for you know getting your your functions across for specific areas. Mm -hmm. So if you indeed increased the controls by let's say not having a 2D interface but literally like dra dragging and dropping specific blocks or increasing the amount of blocks, that would both give you the massing options, and at the same time you see simultaneously what you're doing in space. So indeed, more you know, virtual Minecraft, uh, yeah, a Minecraft game for for, for this. Yeah, nice. for for the biggest part of the game, I had no idea what the wings and this stuff was. I wasn't properly introduced to the building, so I was just trying to to guess and with the numbers and the sliders that didn't really work. So at at, at one point, I just decided to let go of the whole simulation part in the screen and just focus and come up with some crazy ideas like an architect would. Um, and I then, then then came the point when I had some fun and some interesting ideas maybe popped up in the group. So I think the the simulate I, I have written down a lot of things actually two pages. So I'll I'll uh, put that I'll put that wow. through you, uh, Bruno. Great. But I, I think that the uh, uh, the the essential part takes place in the discussion between the people and yeah. trying to figure out the simulation or trying to focus on on the numbers and sliders too much distracts and. Uh, uh, I think the game could use more aiding tools to help the discussion uh, even more. Great point, thanks. Yeah, yeah so uh, the, 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 there was a debate between us actually whether to have direct control on the shape or uh, really abide by the principle of design as decision making and only ask people to submit decisions. In the end, we went for, for that because we thought that if it is about drawing and, and skills in 3D, then by definition, it would exclude some uh, people who may not feel comfortable with the 3D environment. So we thought maybe the discussion part is even more important than the shape that's, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could even have just one facilitator operate the simulation and nobody else. So what happens is that you draw the game into the discussion and everybody takes, gets cards or gets you know, on which they write their preferences or they, uh, they could award their points, coins or anything to to a certain uh, program uh, that they want. And then the, uh, this, the facilitator uses the simulator and then he or she can show what, ha what has happened. And then you, you, don't, you don't let the players interact with the simulation because that distracts. And I can imagine if you're working with Lego on, on a board, that might be a lot better. But even then, I think the, the people should be talking, uh, about, talking about it and, and trying to convince each other because that's where the, the most interesting things happen. And if they see a feedback afterwards, like we do now, but then only not with them interacting, I think that might be a, an interesting thing too. Very interesting point, thank you. Yeah, you can use it as a dem democratic uh, tool. If, if the city wants to develop a, an area, you can ask the people uh, living there, uh, what is their ideal situation uh, in, uh, by creating uh, they want to build a new uh, new flat or so uh, what is needed for them to have a nice uh, environment so so you can have a discussion about uh, the two plans and let's show it in real time 
It's quite interesting also, Michael, because it relates to two things, uh, needs, values, mm -hmm. and also just scenario thinking. So yeah. if we could find a way to combine this, these two options, because then in the game now we preset some functions and, and, and grading and messing criteria just to help us starting to understand how this would work. But definitely letting also people having the freedom to choose uh, which functions or needs do they have and also how this would take shape in terms of uh, changing the typology or even the materials and so on. That also would be a step ahead yeah. for the design. Yeah. But, but uh, so thank you for that. Um, but, but also what, yes, please. With respect, uh, there is a researcher in, uh, I met her years ago in Denmark and she did basically the same uh, as, as, as you do now with Minecraft and she did that to uh, engage uh, the more disadvantaged uh, uh, social groups in 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 well low income areas to have them more connect to their uh, living environment so um, they can could adapt it and uh, the social climate uh, would be uh, would be raised in the area and I can I can look it up for you uh, if if you're interested, but yes. uh, she she did extensive research on that. Definitely, I would love that. And uh, and it's uh, thank you so much again. And I'm so happy that Minecraft is popping up a thousand times because it's so reassuring for me. I'm not alone. Definitely, it's so clear to me. But what I also want to share with you, it's a pity that my ex student uh, Pin Tall she did her master's graduation last year and uh, this July actually she defended. On this case, Cabo Fabrique, and she used the Minecraft as, um, so we created this Minecraft workshop session in which different stakeholders, uh, they have uh, the possibility to project scenarios for change of the Cabo Fabrique in terms of entrance, adding new stories, um, changing materials. So it's really a, a redesign exercise. And then by affinity, and by consensus, the groups starts to merge. And by the end, we have a final design. So this is also an interesting case. And I can share with all of you her thesis uh, in the end. So you can see how we use Minecraft in this one. So in this case, Minecraft would be more like a design uh, tool. And what I think is the potential of the Equicity game is that the decision that comes before the design, you know, so how to transform uh, and to convert and to translate wishes and in terms of functions and building parts so that this could inform the design process. So, so it's like uh, inverting the process of design and making it more equitable, uh, the decisions that precedes the design when they usually happen afterwards when people are consulted. Oh, what do you think? Uh, do you like this scenario or this scenario? So also this process of design thinking and, and, and decision making, it could be a, a, it's a, like a nexus of this game that we would like to explore further. So I see some, some hands raised, but I don't see who, <laughs> so go on. Maybe, maybe I, I can go first. Thank you for this really interesting uh, game and way of collecting all the, all the needs of the, of the people. And um, one remark I have is um, that uh, you, you get feedback, uh, you, you, you have input and you get feedback. And in my, uh, how, how I view it now, you, the only feedback you get is geo geometrical, how the program is, uh, is dis dis distributed and how the volumes are. Are you also working on other feedback like sound, uh, energy, uh, material impact, uh, all those other really interesting feedback which will make the, the, the input in, in the second route with much more nuances. Is this something you're, you're planning on? It's a great question, uh, Michiel. Uh, in fact, we, uh, our framework has the generality that it allows for adding more feedback mechanisms. Right now we have uh, very basic environmental feedback mechanisms with respect to light and visibility and shadows, the right of daylight of neighbors. And I think that's about it. And one more feedback mechanism, which is based on the preset uh, uh, preferences of, of the, the users for having 
some closeness ratings in terms of accessibility in, in the site because the site is relatively large. Um, and they are the ones that are plotted uh, for, the, for the whole site in the, in the game info on the radar plots. But in fact, the, the generality of the framework is based on multi-criteria decision analysis. So we can have more, many more in fact, and, and we can improve on this. So I actually uh, evaluation in that sense, multi-criteria evaluation in that sense is the core agenda point for us because we are effectively even deriving the whole decision from those evaluations. So the more the merrier, I would say, but uh, that's, a, that's a long, uh, yeah, how, how do you say? It's a work, work agenda for a lifetime, right? So we need to collaborate and, and add more evaluation uh, mechanisms to such processes and uh, they're open to suggestions. Yeah, noise is, is really cool, but we have very little knowledge about that. We have very basic models for evaluating noise, but they're absolutely wrong. And the uh, estimations, not nothing, nothing serious. But yeah, we can yeah, well, think about uh, it. What you could do is work with really simple rules uh, like distance and, and sound sources. And if you if you keep it really yeah. simple, also we have one of those. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. Thank really you cool. so much. So thank you. Thank you, Michiel. So not to prolong too much, we have passed four now. We'd like to give the word to Katrina and Sebastian. Yeah, it was um because Simon mentioned the idea of coins, and I've been trying to grapple with the idea that, as such, my incentive to move the sliders to to help others is very low, because uh, I can still agree with them, but then just do my sliders however I want. Uh, at the same time, there's no trade off in the same way, and that it's a bit difficult to understand the control matrix and how that influences the sort of value of your decisions. So I was thinking, what if you actually have, say, a point or coin system such that you actually multiply your control with, um, well, actually, you only multiply your control because then you have, say, four coins for the public, but only two coins for the residential, which means you have a lot more say on what happens to the public. And then you can trade those, say, one public coin to a commercial coin with the developer or something so that you can then place one more of those coins because you you had more of those to begin with, but you're more interested in trading with the other person. It, it does change your whole game setup, but I was thinking that's a bit more tangible perhaps. Thank you so much, Sebastian. That's definitely an, an interesting one to explore different connections and relations and rewards uh, between players, but... Um, yeah, so this is definitely what we could work. And what you said just struck me something quickly that uh, when players can decide to combine their efforts, somehow their power matrix could be uh, summed in, in a way and they could reinforce each other also um, building up on what you just said. So th thanks for this. And now Katrina. Yeah, I kind of agree with the idea with the coin system. It, it will help. It, it gets the same point across. You need to see, reach a consensus and you need to, you know, talk to other people. Um, however, the the matrix that you provide in general, the game is, 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 is really complex. Um, and I wasn't 100% sure what is precisely sort of the, the goal of it. What are you trying to teach us? What are you trying to make us understand? Um, and in this case, indeed, I would also propose maybe trying to reducing the complexity because uh, at least a majority of the colleagues that I see around me who are not gamers, who are not used to 3D environments, this will be very difficult for them to also track uh, the multiple interfaces that you have to be tracking of. Um, one way of doing it is indeed splitting game a bit more in specific subsets. Uh, such as, for instance, maybe starting first with saying, hey, how much in total of a specific function we're doing? We're trying to reach a consensus how many blocks of residential of how many blocks of something else we're creating or zooming in only in a specific area instead of going through the same round with everybody because it's, it's very difficult to also keep the discussion um, not going in different directions. So if you would control this within the mechanic of the game, so let's say in this round, we're only focusing on the skin or in this round, we're doing this and afterwards you can change it a little bit, but just focusing on specific areas or only a specific single aspect that would help, I think, a lot of people because then you 
keep track of less uh, of elements um, in the game. It's true. Thank you, Katrina. Um, that's exactly what was in my mind. Having a big round with some uh, smaller mini rounds, having the building parts as uh, a protagonist of each round. So that's a great suggestion. We've been trying this whole year, um, making the game more complex and more fun and uh, using also because actually turn this into a game right now i think we can say it's a simulation game at least we ended up putting some gamification aspects to that the badges and uh, the social interactions but we definitely want to increase the, the the gaming elements make it less complex and even shorter find a way to make it like a one hour game or half an hour game that could have different lengths uh, depending on the complexity and, and the goal and uh, the aspect we want to focus on. Definitely the case study led us to this format. So this would also be something we could rethink in terms of an urban scale of a more uh, a smaller building in different pavements even to explore on that. So that's a, a great input to look into. So uh, any last uh, remarks uh, from your side, guys, so that we can wrap up. Yes, yes, one more. Do the animals in the, in the neighborhood also have a say in the, in the game? Not currently, unfortunately, but maybe we should integrate that within the system. Well, I, I would love to have some foxes around the building, but uh, they're very hard to find in the Netherlands. <laughs> oh, the foxes birds are out. Yeah, but... um, yeah, I would be in favor of foxes and, and beavers, but what, what other animals did you have in mind? But I mean, it's actually, uh, if there are all these residential areas, I assume, especially after COVID, uh, there are going to be a lot of dogs and cats. Dogs and cats, yeah. yeah. Domestic animals. Yeah. I don't know why I was thinking about Pokemons because I play Pokemon Go a lot. And uh, Pokemon Go slash Minecraft slash Epic City slash Monopoly. It's, it could be something we could be leaning towards. So thank you so much. I will give the final word to Peter. So big boss in this amazing project yeah, yeah. Yeah, Merlin. and Merlin, the musician. It's a pleasure. Thank you guys for participating. I think uh, the, the round and the discussion was the most interesting aspect of it. So hopefully we are getting all of these uh, feedbacks from you and I hope that we can get a bit more if you have written anything for us so we can improve this further. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. This, uh... This was unbelievable. So whatever scenario, I'm not saying that our scenario was perfect, but whatever scenario we had, it depended on, it depended on your participation. And it was fantastic. Um, I wish we had uh, the opportunity to, to have a few drinks together and, and celebrate this. But uh, given the circumstances, I think this was great. We have already collected so much input. We would really appreciate it if you could uh, kindly write some words in the evaluation forms as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we will just use them anonymously for our research and, and of course acknowledge your participation and contributions and we will be looking forward to uh, collaborating with you all in another occasion for something equalitarian, <laughs> can I say, <laughs> or some automagics or whatever for the purpose of uh, improving equity and spatial justice. So um, I don't think we have the possibility to gather all the, the badges, but do, do we have a record of who won most, the most of the badges? The last, the last one. one. I missed the last round, who won? The issue is resolved if, if we check the system. And see Can you guys double check your there. system to see uh, who won some badges in this? in this last round. I think I managed to snatch the player of the round <laughs> to the mayor side this time. You, you were the player of the round? Yes. Fantastic. Well, you did a great job. By the I, end, I, you... 
I got the contributor again, again, again. Uh, even though I, 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 I actually tried to move my sliders to be a bit more extreme on my top two priorities. You tried your best, but you could not run away from your own personality and goodwill of helping the other's neighbor. Exactly. Is that the role that's attached to you strongly? Just I'm worried about you now. And uh, who else? Who got the the gainer of the round? Me again. <laughs> okay, you like. <lie. laughs> so I guess we have a winner. So the winner is da -da 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 -da, Ilaria Rossetti. The Congratulations. <laughs> the inhabitants won a great uh, gameplay. You were really smart throughout the rounds. I could see you sneaking around, being, you know, have your explicit and hidden agendas all there. So well so, done. Uh, technically, Sebastian is the do-gooder of the whole game, right? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> and so, I mean, I don't think it counts because this is the third time that I play. So yeah, I, it has to be said. True. So you don't, you don't strike me as a very calculating person, but apparently you are. <laughs> <laughs> you see. So this is the power of games yeah. revealing people's personalities <laughs> and their true skills and uh, social skills and so on. So guys, uh, yeah, just thank you so much for your engagement. The level of uh, engagement, participation and discussions was like overwhelming. It surpassed so much my expectations. We are really happy with uh, this uh, gameplay and we are looking forward to, to get more feedback, but most of all, to have this as a starting platform to collaborate with you, you know, in, in your own research, your uh, practice, uh, whenever you are professionally, we are looking forward to uh, team up and uh, collaborate with you somehow and see how this game or other games have been also working with Minecraft and, and now with Second Life too. And the guys have been working in, in computational gaming modeling and uh, goal design. So we, we have already some set of references to move forward any sort of collaboration that we could um, uh, develop between us. So again, thank you so much, Pyrrhus, and other last words. And also, Anna, that is not here. Maybe she's listening to us, I don't know, in the streaming. And you on the other side, in the streaming side, that cannot say anything. You can only chat and maybe even not that. Thank you also for joining yes, us. Thank you. Uh, one, one small uh, advertisement. Please follow uh, this guy called uh, Netuno to Delft on Twitch <laughs> if you want to stay tuned. And uh, here's a, a link to our lab as well. So if you are interested in, in this line of work, Netuno is your, your hero to follow on Twitch <laughs> to stay in touch. Anything about participation, games for design, etc you know where to find us, how to find us. It was so great to have you all here today with us. And let's hope we will have an opportunity to meet uh, uh, physically in a place with, uh, I don't know, drinks and snacks and celebrate this at some point in future and maybe play a little bit with Lego and stuff. Uh, my fingers are itching for playing with Lego at the moment right now. And we need time to digest this whole session. This was so great, so great, thank you. And we will be having some gaming sessions next year. So stay tuned in, in our uh, Twitch so that we can uh, schedule some physical, probably gaming sessions monthly. Let's see how this will take place. But we are excited also to, to have this as a more informal setting to research together. All right. Thank you so much, guys, once more. Have a nice afternoon. And uh, we are looking forward to meeting you again. Thanks a lot. A nice evening. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Bye -bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. So I don't want to end the session, but I need to. Okay. I stop recording. Are you sure?